Welcome to this Flonix webinar based on two-phase flow simulation within Flonix. Today we can discuss quite a basic simulation, but I think it really highlights the power of Flonix and ability of Flonix to simulate homogeneous two-phase flow. So let's just have a look at what we're trying to model. First of all, it's a boiler line, or you could say a process steam line from a boiler, where we're modeling the flow between factories at a length of about 100 meters. So what you can notice is we, we're modeling quite a long pipe and um, we're going to look at the effect of that length um, on the, the fluid and also the heat transfer to atmosphere. What we'll see then is that the line splits up so we have um, branching flow. Some of that steam is vented off to atmosphere and we're going to look at choking flow and the effect Flonix has all the ability of Flonix to model that and then finally we'll look at the core of the simulation which is a condenser we will track the level of condensation within our condenser based on the specific flow of the cooling lines within that condenser and then the mass flow that's been supplied to our process uh, we're going to then control that system and see how our controllers will then affect the cooling line flow to give us the correct heat transfer and maintain a consistent uh, mass flow to our process system. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, to start off the simulation, I'm going to run a transient of um, our network, and as that transient runs, I'll discuss everything that changes and the effects within the network. Okay, so let's get it running. Okay, first of all you can see we've now ran a script to change the cooling line mass flow. Uh, it was around 1 kilogram per second. We've just increased that to around 2. We can straight away see because of the increase in cooling flow through our condenser, we have a increase in the um, heat transfer and we can have effect on the level of our system as well. You can see then there's more co condensation because of the increased heat transfer and the level within our condenser is going to increase. So let's see what the effect of changing that cooling flow line back to one kilogram per second has on our system. Straight away we can see that um, decrease in flow, obviously decrease in heat transfer, and once again um, our level is going to be affected. Now, what's important in this system is that total mass flow at the outlet. We want to maintain that mass flow to be at around 0.2 kilograms per second, and we also want to maintain the level within our open contain, or my apologies, level within our condenser. So let's now switch on our control systems and let them control it to maintain the exact properties that we would like. So I'm going to them on and now once again increase my cooling flow line to change my system properties and then we'll see how those controllers control the network okay so what's happening with this controller is it's gonna vary the inlet or outlet valve diameter and the electronic valve at the bottom is going to vary the mass flow out of the system. Now this is all done in a um, HMI of the Phonix network, so it's visualization of the actual network that's running in the back. Um, as you can see we have multiple pages. I'm just going to move to our Phonix network where basically all the engineering work is done. You can see it's exactly the same network, it's just where all the inputs of the properties and various components are set up. So if we look um, at those controllers, again we're measuring the, in this case, the mass flow at the outlet of the pipe and we're controlling the valve opening. And that would be um, the specific valve diameter. And there you can see the opening is changing constantly to maintain that mass flow property. Okay, let's have a look at the 
100 meter pipe at the inlet where we're modeling heat transfer to atmosphere. Within this pipe, we have the ability to, first of all, model a single component and then increment it. So in this case, we have 10 sub-elements. So this 100 meter pipe is incremented into 10 pipes um, with the mean properties over the length. So now we can get a distribution of density, pressure, um, quality changes within that pipe over its length. Now what I'd like to focus on is the heat transfer and the ability of Linux to model insulation layers. So that's conduction. And we're going to look at the specific conduction layers which we have modeled in this case, where we have a initial layer of carbon steel at around 5.5 millimeters, which is our pipe thickness. We're then modeling an insulation layer, which is a fiberglass blanket, and that's at around 50 millimeters. And then our final layer is a a uh, thin layer of carbon steel cladding on top of the pipe. So what's quite important to, to us in this type of simulation would be to ensure that our surface temperature is within an acceptable range. Only if we design that insulation thickness to be at an accurate size. So let's have a look at our process HMI at what we're modeling. So initially we designed the system to run it around 50 millimeter insulation and give us a surface temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, which is, is quite good. So if we go ahead and change that insulation thickness in Flonex uh, from around 50 millimeters to let's say 20 millimeters, we can then see the effect um, if we solve in steady state that that insulation has on the network. So now we have a case where we don't have an acceptable outlet or surface temperature of 32 degrees, it's gone up to around 55 degrees and we can then use tools in Flonex to design the optimum cladding and insulation thickness to give us the temperature that we do require. In this case we're just going to keep it around 50 because <coughs> 32 degrees is, is quite acceptable and we'll move on now to look at within that pipe where we are modeling on the general TS diagram. So what I'm going to do next, just zoom into our TS diagram. So within this TS diagram, uh, we have multiple options of different types of two-phase graphs that you'd like to plot in the operation point within Flonix. We also have the ability to plot where we are in regards to flow regimes. I'll have a look at that next. We have, if we have a look at the flow regime within the vertical venting pipe and we can see in this case we're in around the churn flow region. Now this is directly linked to the heat transfer correlations that Flonix will use so depending on which regime you're in Flonix will use the adequate um, heat transfer correlation. It will also then give you an indication of where you are so if you are in an acceptable range you have the ability then to change your properties and track how you'll be moving in and out of these specific flow regimes within Flonix. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for this webinar today. Um, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to visit our website at www.flonix.com. Uh, we have an online forum where you can post any questions and we help you with any requests you might have regarding Flonix. Thank you.